Hey everyone, thank you for joining me to 1024 subs, which by the way is equivalent to the Atari 2600's RAM in bits. With that fun fact out of the way, I would like to share my journey to 1K subs so that you might learn something from it and perhaps start your own YouTube channel. I will give both general and more precise tips along the way. But before we get into that, I would like to give a big thank you to Joey DeVries for his amazing tutorials on OpenGL, which helped me learn this API. Another big thank you to Bo Cagnes from FreeCodeCamp, who accepted my OpenGL course and thus gave me some exposure. And of course, a heartwarming thanks to my first subscriber, Juanma Aguilar Onate, whose name I probably just mispronounced. With that out of the way, let's get into the thick of it. I wanted to make YouTube videos for a long while, but I kept putting it off because I thought my videos would not be good enough for my standards. Being a perfectionist, you can imagine my standards are really high, so I just had to make amends with the idea that I won't be able to make a perfect video, and I just need to make a good enough video, like this video. The first opportunity came to me when I started learning OpenGL from Joey's tutorials on learnopengl.com. In the installation tutorial, I felt that there was quite a few steps missing due to him probably assuming we already know how to install libraries in our projects. It took me a few hours to figure out, but in the end I managed it. I saw that there were other people in the comments saying they are stuck, so I decided to make a YouTube video on it to help others. Something which I enjoy doing. There are a few lessons to take from the first video I made. First of all, it shows that you don't need a lot of experience or fancy equipment to make a single video that can actually help people. The video is currently at 4K views with a 100% like ratio and nice comments, so I would at least like to think it helped a lot of people out. Secondly, if you are using your phone's mic to record audio, make sure you know where the damn mic is, because I was speaking in the opposite end of the phone. The most important thing is probably the fact that I was a complete noob to this API and I was still able to make a tutorial on it. And I think that teaching something that you just learned can have some advantages over teaching something that you're an expert in. Since the learning experience is fresh in your mind, you can remember things that you found difficult and thus, when teaching it, you can point out those things or at least just include them in the teaching material. An expert, though, might forget about the difficulty of certain parts and see them as trivial, and thus just skip over them. Another advantage is that by teaching the subject to others, you yourself are learning more about it. But, of course, the biggest disadvantage would be that you may give false information or wrong instructions. Thankfully, programming is less prone to the second problem, since you get feedback from the computer the second you compile your program. If it works, it works. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. As for false information, you just need to check multiple sources and be careful about what you say. If someone points out something wrong you say, make sure you try and fix that mistake. Now for the more technical part. I use my phone to record the audio, which is the Samsung Galaxy S10, if you're wondering. If you use the app Wall Mic, you can connect your phone through an USB cable to your PC and use it as your mic. Notice you need the app both on your computer and on your phone. In the audio itself, I would record using Audacity. For the illustrations in my videos, I use GIMP. For recording my screen, I use OBS Studio. And to put everything together, I use DaVinci Resolve. All the software I mentioned is free to use and download and some of it is even open source. Let me know if you want a tutorial on this where I give more details. The second big step I made in my journey was in the video OpenGL Tutorial 4, Organizing. Here, I deviated for the first time quite a bit from the Learn OpenGL tutorials and started using multiple sources for some of my video. The big lesson to learn from this is to not be afraid to deviate from a proven structure and create your own structure even if you're not very experienced. My custom classes did have some disadvantages in the long run, but overall, I think they proved quite useful. The third important video, and by the way, my hand is kind of fucked up because I cut it into a piece of glass right before I recorded this, so I'm sorry. 
Anyways, the third important video is OpenGL tutorial number 10, Specular Mouse. Here I figured out a great way to reduce production time and minimally affect production value. Before this video, I would always record myself writing out the code, which took quite a bit of time because I would make typos sometimes and I would have to redo the whole section. But starting with this video, I realized that I can just start with the code written out and record myself deleting the code and then simply reverse it in the video editing phase. This has honestly saved me a lot of time and I noticed that other YouTubers such as Parji, for example, also do this. Around the time of my 13th tutorial, I learned at university about Git and instead of having all my code written in GitHub gists, which was honestly a pain to create and probably a pain to read, I made a GitHub repo for all my tutorials which was honestly one of the best things I did for this channel. This also had the advantage that if someone said their project is not working, I could redirect them to the repo and ask them if the tutorial in the repo works. If it does, then they probably messed something up. But if my tutorial project does not work for them, then that means that there is an underlying problem that might be related to the hardware or the OS rather than the code itself which would save time troubleshooting. This was also the last video I included in the OpenGL course for the free code camp video. A few weeks later, the course was posted and it got tens of thousands of views, sending hundreds of people to my channel. Having such a high exposure, I also got negative feedback for the first time. And some of it was useless, such as this sucks or this is a bad course. I would classify these as haters, but others were more refined, such as I really don't enjoy the sped up parts of the tutorials and they're a deal breaker for me. This was probably one of the most common complaints I got, and my response to this would be that I like those parts and I believe it all has to do with your preferences. If you like the sped up parts, then watch my videos. If you don't, watch the tutorials made by someone like Michael Grieco, sorry for the mispronunciation, which are about an hour long each. We sadly can't please or help everyone, but I also got comments such as I wish you would explain things in more detail, which I took into account in some of my latter videos. The bottom line is to ignore hateful comments and take into account constructive comments if and only if they don't change your style. The next step was my Imgui tutorial which showed me I should not be afraid to make videos on things that are slightly different from my usual content and that these kind of videos might even do better. Right now, this tutorial is one of my more popular ones and just like the first video I made, I made it since I was trying to learn Imgui and I thought it would be nice if there was a concise video on how to do this and I didn't have to scour the internet for bits of information for hours on end, so I just decided to make that video myself to help others where I wasn't able to be helped. But now, on the other hand, my symbiotic speedrun video shows that you should also not get too far away from your main content. This video has done pretty poorly, which is honestly fine, since it's just a fun little video I made in two hours after watching Borges' video on making this game. The important thing that you should learn from this video is that it's good to start interacting with other YouTubers. After this video, I had a small chat with Barji, and besides him, I've also interacted a tiny bit with OGL Dev and even Joey himself from Learn, Op Learn Open GL. Doing this helps you feel a bit more part of the bigger community of content creators, at least for me. And you also shouldn't shy away from promoting smaller channels related to yours, like I did with OGL Dev and others. Making people aware of the fact that there are multiple sources where they can learn the things you teach them is pretty important if you want members of your audience to get more knowledge and grow overall as persons. At least that's my opinion. This video is starting to get pretty long at this point, so the last pieces of advice I have are to interact with your audience through comments 
And to keep in mind that even if you do your best, you may sadly still fail to achieve your goals. <coughs> Since luck also plays a role in the process, and that's okay. Don't let it bother you too much. You can always try again later or keep going at it until some luck hits you from nowhere. I was initially planning to include a Q&A at the end of this video, but since I got a lot of questions, which is nice, nice. and this is dragging on, I will make a separate video on the Q&A. Before leaving, I would like to suggest you to check out OGL Dev if you want detailed videos on the topics I cover, Michael Rico if you want walkthrough sort of videos on OpenGL, and lastly but not least, designed by Hugo, which has some nice tutorials on C++ related things and will hopefully post more soon enough. Here is a picture of a cool 3D printed steel bridge. Bye!